Hello and welcome! My name is Ahu and this is my Let's Play series of Eurofin Service 4 where we are playing as Brandenburg into Prussia. And again, I'm just gonna be shamelessly promoting myself from the start of the video. If you like this video, please press the like button at the bottom of the screen and that would help me out a lot on my channel. And now we are done with the shameless promotion, let's get on with this game. So, we are in a war with the Teutonic Order, with help from uh, our good friends Poland, who also brought along Lithuania, Mosovia and Moldavia, just for the fun of it. Uh, we already knocked out our rival Mecklenburg and got a quite nice bonus to our power protection for that. Which means that most likely, once we take uh, win this war, we will get above the magic limit of 50 power protection that will give us extra mana points very important. So I think we already talked about what we want to get out of this war. Uh, we pr in order to get Poland to help us, um, we had to promise them land. And uh, the only way we can uh, make them come out of this happy is to give them Chelmno. If we try to ask for anything else but money or ending alliances, they won't... Uh, Poland won't like it and we'll get a huge... Uh, Oh, and we will even get a favor for this because this is higher. Uh, this is 10. Yeah, so they're getting more development. So even though they also have higher war participation, they're actually giving us a favor for this, which is nice. So obviously, I don't want to be giving too much land to Poland because we are going to be fighting with Poland later on in this campaign. But uh, in order to get this war done with quickly, so we can focus on other stuff, uh, I just called him in, because it's going to be hard for us to get any other good allies against the Livonian Order. The other way, of course, would be to just wait for 10 years until actually 30 years, in this case, to get enough favors that he would just help us out of uh, kindness, but I didn't, I didn't fancy waiting that long. So let's just get on with it. We are currently seizing down two of these forts. Um, I'm almost sure that once at least one of them falls, uh, we'll basically have this. He's already at medium. Um, of course there's still the Vonian Order which is a part of this, which is a wild card. But I think one, one of these falls he'll he'll be willing to give up. There's only two provinces that some money we are taking from him, so... It's not like it's that much. Of course, um, we could go and ask for a lot of other things like Livonian Order and Mecklenburg. Get rid of those alliances. Uh, I think, depending on how the war uh, looks, it might be worth it for the extra prestige. It's only gonna be a tiny amount of prestige, but it also means that we can attack Mecklenburg at some point without having to drag Teutonic Order into it. And if we're lucky, it also means that Livonian Order won't be able to ally them again before we get the next chance to invade them. The downside of course is that we will have a longer truce with them, but also with Poland. And uh, we def desperately need to get at least Stolp, so we can get Danzig and um, then later on Königsberg before Poland gets their hands on it, because I want to form Prussia before we have to fight Poland. I also preferably want to be the Emperor before we fight Poland, but it's a whole other Thing. But the House of von Holstein is shaken. It seems to have been a misunderstanding regarding the heritage of a great grandmother of Frederick II. It seems that she was the daughter of a lowly farmer from outside Berlin. <gasps> oh no, not a farmer! Nothing! Everything else but a farmer! Well, we're not gonna go on negative prestige, so we're just gonna uh, suffer a little bit of legitimacy. So we're just gonna deny it fervently. That's not true! Definitely a count or something. At least, maybe a king! It was the best king! Starting to sound a little Trumpish, but hey. Anyway, um, just kind of waiting here. There's still quite a lot of soldiers uh, standing around. I'm not sure if we can... We, cannot, we can still not go here. So we have to wait for this uh, to fall and then we can go and uh, kick the, some butt here. And they are immediately going for it, which means I'm gonna join them for the points. Uh, bam bam bam. 
And we of course get a little bit of armor edition out of this, some little some prestige, um, and more importantly, war score and participation. And I'm just trying to go and take Danzig. And even win a war on my uh, battle on my own. Gonna lose a little bit more manpower there than I would have liked, but it's not too bad. Twelve hundred and fifty five, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Also brought us up to thirty percent participation. Not that we're gonna I don't think Okay, can we can we get you to an all these now? We cannot get you to an all both. How long much before you will an all? Probably actually pretty soon. If we just give it a a few ticks might be willing to do it, yes. Can we get more money? Uh, let's just grab this. This is still like a pretty good amount of money. We won't be getting that much of it, but um, actually, the piece will cost Poland 30 uh, Diplo points. Interesting. So we get 10 power projection, which is enough. Uh, we get 1.9 prestige, which isn't that much. Um, and that's because of our low uh, p uh, power or our low participation. We will get six aggressive expansion, which is really nothing. Um, I think this is what we're gonna take. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to pay for this uh, core now because it's not our core anymore. It used to be that, but. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take this piece so we don't waste more uh, manpower in this war. And we can see the war ended up costing uh, 36,000 lives on our side and 51,000 on their side. If we look at only us, we paid 3,076 deaths in combat and about 1,922 deaths in attrition. Um, so basically what you can see from this is that attrition is actually quite a big part of a war. Um, here we see that it's one th almost one third of the total casualties on our side was attrition. Of course, if you are uh, the defender, usually you don't accrue any attrition, so that's why he is as a low. Unless, of course, you are sitting down there. Usually it will be the winner, basically, uh, suffering a lot of attrition. So that's the piece we just made. I don't know. And we got the... Um, What's it called? We got the mission, and we need to give some land to the nobility. Do we want to give them Neumark? Yeah, it's already high autonomy. Um, it's gonna have unrest anyway, so we might as well decrease autonomy. Like either, either we increase autonomy and don't have unrest, or we decrease autonomy and we pay. And I think I would rather decrease autonomy. Um, to get a little bit more out of it, and then just give it to the nobility. Uh, it means that for military uh, sake, it won't have autonomy, but it'll still have some autonomy uh, for trade and and taxes. And we have to core it, of course. And a new. This is a really nice mission that I'm probably gonna take, Culver and Stolp. Could also, I think we're gonna do this one first. Just because it's easy and we probably need a little bit of time, unless they... Mm, I don't know. How is it looking here? We're still quite a way away from getting the... Um, can we improve that much with the Palatinate? We definitely can, we haven't improved with them at all, so we can get three votes right now. And so, since we would be stealing one from Austria, we would then be the leading contender. So, um, I think I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna send him off. I'm just gonna go down to half maintenance for now. Actually, no maintenance. Um, and I think I'm just gonna take the Anhalt mission just because I want a. How long it's gonna take? You, you like me? A little bit. It's gonna take a while though. Would I rather just get the war going? So if we declare this war, um, we'll be fighting Lüneburg and Oldenburg as well. I don't think. 
Like we only have 10,000 soldiers. If they manage to link up, we don't have a chance. So yeah, I'm gonna go for the Anhalt one, and then I'm gonna spend a little bit of time in peace. We also we don't want our aggressive expansion to take up too much um, because of course that hurts our chances of getting relations up with these guys. So. But we should send a guy to Anhalt. Why can't I press this? And in Fragusa was Eden. Let's just send this. And if you didn't, no, they didn't get Eden. No, I didn't see. They were in a war with them, though. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't get Eden. Ragusa is such a nice province to grab as the Ottoman because you can uh, basically push all your. Ooh, did they change this? No, I think I think they. Did. But yeah, you can push your trade from Constantinople to Ragusa and then collect it there, and you'll be able to collect even more more monies. And of course, if you expand even further, you can change to Venice later on. But that's uh, that's not what we're playing right now. That was in another game. I am kind of uh, wanting to play a private game of Ottoman just to check out the new mechanics with the harem and such. That's gonna be exciting to see what that's all about. Uh, I think I'm just gonna go up to uh, full maintenance. So apparently we made the nobility have too much influence by giving them that province. But in... Eight years, it will go away. So it is probably though rising, but we might have to juggle around with their provinces a little bit. But for now, it's gonna be okay. Um, did we get more? Yeah, we got one more force limit. I'm just gonna buy one more infantry to get up to our force limit. And I think in. Uh, I need fawn and yeah. I think we're just gonna go to low, low now, and then once we need our army, it will be reinforced before it gets to full morale. So let's go to speed four. I should have gone that, done that right after the end. So the uh, Albania is no more. And how are we doing on the Holy Roman Empire? Um, we could also improve with Cologne after Anhalt, and then we would definitely have the um, the votes secured. Let's check out the Great Powers. Ming is still number one because of their ridiculous number of development, and because they haven't caught any tech penalty yet. Um, but France has taken a solid second place, and Poland is getting up there because they get half of Lithuania's development as well. So Ottomans are still behind, but I, I feel like Ottomans will probably search to a second place once they start grabbing their cores and starting, especially once they get Byzantium and get that uh, decision to increase it by, all, I think it's almost 10 development or something like that. It's insane. Uh, it's gonna be take over, I think Paris from the start of the game, oh it's actually only, no Paris. 33 development. So from the start of the game, I think Paris is the highest development province, but I'm pretty sure Constantinople t overtakes it once the Turks do their decision. <sighs> oh. Uh. This is interesting. Uh, this this must be something that only works for AIs, but uh, Scotland's king apparently I don't know if we can see this. Yeah, because Scotland's king has the loose lips trait, he will disclose their attack plans ahead of time. That's really interesting. That's such an interesting mechanic. Not that we can use it for anything now, but. That's pretty interesting and fun, if nothing else. Uh, we don't want to attack Magdeburg. And we're soon finishing our core in Neumark. So, three years until the Renaissance will start in Italy. That's gonna be exciting times. 
gonna have to get to play around with a new mechanic. So, Muscovy got a full annexation trade league of um, Novgorod was disbanded. How are we doing? We're actually getting pretty close to getting the third vote. We already have... Well, right now we are tied with uh, Tria and, and Mines, but once we get Palatinate on our side, we're gonna have the third vote. And after we'll have zero votes, what the... What have Austria been doing? N nothing apparently? I don't know. Did we get some aggressive... We got a little bit of aggressive expansion, but not a lot. I don't know why he is so unpopular. But I don't mind it. I don't mind it one bit. Uh, complaints about Bailiff. Um, this is one of those prestige or stability. Gonna have to lose prestige, unfortunately. Uh, it is growing, but it's gonna hurt our chances. I think prestige plays into this. Uh, yeah, it does. But we got our third vote. Yes. Now we just have to wait for the Austrian king to die, and we will be the Holy Roman Emperor. Okay. So next part of the plan. Uh, I think I'm just gonna keep improving with. Yeah. Uh, it's a fluctuating situation. He's probably getting improved from. Uh, no, he's not getting any improvement from. Austria. I don't know why he just tipped there, but we're gonna get that back. Uh, we're gonna improve all the way up. We're gonna try to use at least one of our two diplomats to do that at all times. And we finish the mission with. Serbia to. Ooh, this is one of the great power things. So. Um, the Ottomans are clearly wanting to go toward uh, Byzantium, so in order to, uh, yeah, in order to do that, they are forcing Serbia to stop their having their lines with Byzantium. Uh, this is a really interesting. I I didn't know that. Uh, I I didn't think that the AIs would be smart enough to do this, but this is really nice. So now, Constantinople is without allies, and it will be much easier for the Ottomans to attack them. And um, all they have to pay for it is some troops for Serbia, and I don't think they have to pay anything else. Really interesting. Hope we get to play a lot, play with that later on. So we can either get a rival of a rival for might as well. If yeah, I think we're gonna take that as well, and focus a little bit on getting the emperor right now. Uh, we might. Uh, let's just improve. Might want to get a a claim on Stettin as well for um, before we take a war against Pomerania, mainly because of this estuary. So we we need Stolp, both for getting uh, more claims on Teutonic Order, but also just because Stolp is needed for forming Prussia. And we also need Colbert to do the mission. Uh, of course, we can't see him now, but that's like a mission, the Pomeranian succession, where we can claim these two, and if we get them. Uh, I think we get some. I think it's like the normal one where we get some autonomy change uh, bonus. Dum -dum -dum. How much money are we making? Do we want to root out corruption? Or is it happening? Oh, it's happening automatically because of the incorruptible trait. Uh, if we go to full maintenance, we'll be losing money, so we don't want to hire any more advisors at this point. And we have Presidential Unrest in Neumark. We might as well park the army there just to uh, slow down that rebellion a little bit. Not that he's... Uh, yeah, they're, they're not even... not even re uh, suppressing because we're not paying them. Times of Need! The dynasty of our noble prince-elect von Hohenzollern is certainly a powerful one. Through uh, Frederick II, they rule our nation and will do so for many years to come. Even, however, even the great are sometimes in need of help. Thankfully, the von ha Hohenzollern's family has tied strong bonds to the other great powers, such as the von Wittenbach House, led by no other than Ludwig IV, Prince Elector of the Palatinate. His gracious wife, Margaret, is the daughter of her own royal house and invaluable contact. Perhaps we shall ask her if she can influence her husband to lend us a hand. 
so we can send a letter asking for administrative aid. We can military aid, manpower, or we can get prestige. This is interesting. I kind of want to try out what happens if we ask for any of these. I think I'll ask for administrative aid. Just to see what happens. Nothing apparently. <coughs> A helping hand. Finally we have heard back from our dearest Margaret. Sorry, just have to drink some coffee there to <coughs> soothe my voice. Finally we have heard back from our dearest Margaret regarding our request for her husband. The most noble elector Ludwig IV decided to grant it. The reply was carried back by some of the Palatinate's finest administrators who are here to advise us on the matters of running our country. Very nice! 75 relationship boost and 25 admin power. Very very nice. That's an interesting and really awesome um, event chain. So, um, with that in mind, I think we're gonna end this episode. <coughs> Again, if you like what I'm doing, uh, push the like button down uh, under, it'll help me out a lot. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I hope to see you next time and until then, have a great day.